back and I said, well, I'm going to really tear this place up. And I went there, I had no idea. I'm hitting guys that just got out of Vietnam. They were mean and ugly and they had this strange look in their eyes. And I mean, I learned it's different when you hit a 250 pound boy in high school and you hit a 285 pound man who's been hardened in the jungles of Vietnam. Talk to me, you know what I mean? They were trying to kill us. Guys were dropping like flies. I remember one practice, I lost 13 pounds in one practice. And they wouldn't give us any water. Back in those days, no water, they give you a salt tablet. That's what's to cure all ills. They wouldn't give you some matter, we all didn't die of dehydration. Then when they did give you water, they put it in a bucket. Listen, they put the water in the bucket with a towel in the bucket, and you were supposed to grab the towel and sop on it. And then we freshmen, we were last in line. So all those ugly linemen with their dirty, muddy hands were sopping that water. It's mud and and flies were all together on them. You're going, oh my goodness, I'm about to die. I was so dehydrated, I couldn't drink that mud. For the first time in my life, I almost thought about quitting. And in practice, is at the end, the coach blows the whistle, line up 40 yard wind sprints. So I'm lining up for a wind sprint. And here I am, and I'm thinking, I can't do this. And our All American senior fullback walked up beside me and he said, Hey, rookie. And I was standing right there, and he knew my name, rookie. He said, Hey, rookie. He said, Run with me. When he said that, man, I drafted off him and got up through that practice. Guess where I was every practice after that? Right in line behind Charlie Pell was his name. See, here's the secret. Find people who are already second hours and run with them. Because they'll help you in those weak moments. Because we all have struggling moments in our ministry. I love what Howard Henry said one time at a Promise Keepers event. He was talking about the power of three. He said, every one of us need a Barnabas in our life, someone alongside us who will encourage us. We all need a Paul in our life, someone we can look to who will mentor us and inspire us. And we all need a Timothy. Someone who we're pouring into, inspiring, and we're saying to them, hey, rookie, run with me. Principle number three, Grandpa taught me. Son, always finish whatever you start. Honor your commitments. As we honor our commitments, we honor God. What does it say in Samuel? God said, those who honor me, I will honor you. We finish what we start. We honor our word. We honor our commitments. Well, how am I doing on time? What do I got left? Well, I got, got one minute left? Okay, I'm going to stretch it to two. Maybe three. I got, I, got, I got to tell you one more football story. I grew up with this high school team that never had a winning season. It's a new high school. They only played football for like four years. They won like four games, most they ever won. They had a team of about 20-some players on the team, and, and they'd never done anything. So I came in here to be their head coach. I changed that real quick, man. I went out recruiting. I went into the churches. Recruit. I was everywhere. I was getting the guys on the school get fired up. Team. To my surprise, for, for summer tryouts, 100 players showed up. Wow. I lined them up most athletic down to the least athletic looking person. And then I started passing out equipment, okay? And so when I got down to the 100th guy, his name, his name was a young man who walked up there. His name was Carl Pierce, and he, he looked a lot like this microphone stand, okay? He, he was very skinny, looked like a number two pencil, walked like a duck, most unathletic looking kid I've ever seen. He walked up and said, son, where are you going to play? He says, I'm going to be a wide receiver coach. I said, okay. I hollered into the equipment room. We got any wide receiver pads? I said, no, coach, we've got one pair of pads left. I said, bring it up, we'll make them fit. Brought these shoulder pads. The year before, they had a defensive tackle that weighed about 300 pounds on the team. Now, Carl Pierce, I don't know if he was pushing 100 pounds or not. He was probably in the somewhere between 85 and 92 pounds, okay? He's a real skinny kid. I put the shoulder pads down, down on him. They fell down over his shoulders. He stuck his arm up through the neck hole, and, and he said, Coach, I think these are a little big. I said, no, no, son, you don't understand. You can catch the ball from any position it comes. You know, you're not restricted. You can take those pads and spin them around on the shoulder. Spin <laughs> them around like this. We, we take towels underneath of them to try to hold them on his shoulders. He would still fall off of him. I said, so do I said, how much you need? He said, I'm about a six. I said, a six? That's a pinhead. I said, we got any sixes? I said, no, we only got one helmet. I said, bring it out. We'll make it fit. You guessed it. 
It's like almost a nine. It's like an eight three quarter inch. We put triple cheek pads in it, stuffed little hand towels up in everywhere we could, and no matter what we did, when Carl would run, he looked like a bubble doll, and the helmet would fall around to the side, and his nose would be sticking out of the ear hole. I mean, it's pitiful. Well, we only had one pair of pants. Both of his legs fit down one leg of that pant. We didn't have any belts, so we used shoestrings to strap it up. He was a mess looking. He ran out on the field and had to hold his pants every time he'd come out. He knew one arm jumping jacks. His pants would fall down if he didn't. Guys made fun of him, guys harassed him, but you know what? That kid would not quit. I told everybody that worked hard and had a good attitude, I would dress him all for the games. Well, it came to the first game, I had to dress him, so I hit him in the back. I had him run out on the field. I was afraid he'd trip down and create a mess. I put him very in. And I said, go back there and just stand. Don't move. We won our first game, won our second game, won our third game, won our fourth game. We're now tied to school record and, and a, a four wins for the season. We've already won our first four games. I'm already making the state championship here. I'm thinking big things. We're in our fifth game. We're trailing the whole game. We come from behind with about two minutes left to go. We score the winning touchdown. All we got to do is kick the ball off, hold them for one series, and we can win this game, and we'll be 5-0, and oh, new school record, on our way to a state championship. I have an assistant coach, big old strong guy, played at Florida State University, and his name is Warsi Easter James. Coach James is in charge of special teams. We line up out there, we only got 10 guys on the field. I turn around and say, Coach, got to get some on the field. We only got 10 guys on the field. I'm going to come out, come out. The ref says, you have no more timeouts, Coach. He's about to blow the whistle. I actually turned around and kind of punched the coach in the chest. I said, get somebody on the field. He didn't even look. He turned and grabbed the first person beside him and threw him onto the field, and it was Carl Pierce. I'm going, no! I'm screaming. I'm trying to get a timeout. I didn't get a penalty and get a timeout. Carl goes running out on the field, holding his pants, his head was sideways. He doesn't know where to line up. He doesn't run one practice drill. I turned around and gave that coach a look. Now remember, I wasn't a pastor then. I was going to kill him. Call since that game. I looked at him. They blew the whistle. They were running down the field. I didn't even know Carl. I didn't even know what direction to run. They were running down the field. When Carl was going to run down the field, it looked like body parts were falling off of him. Things were just straggling everywhere like this. Next thing I know, there's this big collision down about the 25-yard line. The guy starts screaming, Fumble! Running backs like Carl Pierce 
This guy ran over Carl again and got entangled in him. Carl was like a piece of hog water. You run through him and just the water wraps all around you. He, just, he didn't know what to do. He then got the tackle. By the end of the season, he was voted the most improved player. And you know what else? Next year, we made him the honorary captain of the special league teams. Carl Pitt. Second Chronicles tells us this. The eyes of the Lord reign throughout all the earth, looking to show himself strong on behalf of that one whose heart is fully committed to him. God knows where you are. He knows what your situation is. He knows exactly what you need. And he's just simply looking for a heart that is sold out to him. So I have a simple message for you, kingdom champions. Grab up your pants and keep running hard after Jesus. God bless you. I love you.